You are listening to ESG News and Views from the Conference Board. Hello, and welcome to ESG News and Views. Today's podcast focuses on how the business community can serve veterans and how veterans can bring value to the business community. This is Paul Washington, Executive Director of the Environmental, Social, and Governance Center here at the Conference Board. The ESG Center focuses on corporate citizenship, sustainability, and governance. This week, the Conference Board observed Veterans Day. But every day, there are opportunities for business to focus on veterans as employees, suppliers, and members of the community. The needs of veterans are real and evolving. According to a recent survey, veterans are 37% more likely to be underemployed than non-veterans. At the same time, though, veterans over-index when it comes to owning businesses. While 7% of the U.S. population are veterans, 9% of small businesses are owned by veterans. Meanwhile, the demographics of veterans are evolving as veterans become more ethnically diverse. To discuss how the business community can serve veterans and vice versa, I'm delighted to be joined by two guests who happen to be two veterans of the U.S. Navy with no aspersions on the other services. The first is Ben Biles, who is co-founder and CEO of American Veterans Group, an investment bank and broker deal dealer committed to providing value to the American military veteran communities. He's a graduate of the Naval Academy and served for six years as an active duty Navy officer. Uh, Welcome, Ben. Oh, hi, Paul. Thanks for having me. And our other guest today is Jeff Caffey, a senior military affairs executive at the Bank of America. He joined B of A in April 2008 directly from the Pentagon and served with distinction in the Navy for 29 years. Welcome, Jeff. Glad you're Pleasure to be with you, uh, Paul and Ben. Well, thank you both for for your many years of service and for agreeing to do this podcast today. So, you know, it it may seem obvious, but I'd like to start by talking about why why companies should focus on veterans. Ben, let's start with you. Um, The American Veterans Group has a unique business model. Can you tell us a little bit about the business, what inspired you to start the firm and and its mission? Certainly, Paul. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. So um, I grew up outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm one of the taller folks that you might have done a podcast with. I'm six foot nine and uh, was able to play basketball at the Naval Academy as a student athlete. Um, one of the best decisions that I've ever made. After graduating from the Naval Academy, I then served active duty for six years in the Navy uh, as a supply officer, handling a lot of logistics uh, duties in the Navy. I was at the USS Nimitz aircraft carrier for two and a half years, stationed in San Diego, California where we did a, a six month deployment to the Persian Gulf, uh, working with you know some of the, just America's best and brightest. Um, I learned so much from my, my military uh, veterans and, and, and folks that are still active duty, uh, values that you know, I still bring every day to help an American veterans group grow. And, um, and then finished my service uh, at the Naval Academy where I was uh, I ran procurement programs at the base there and also got to teach uh, leadership classes to the freshmen at the Naval Academy. Um, from then, I was profoundly affected when I got news that my best friend and roommate from the Naval Academy um, passed away. He, he was uh, coming from back, returning from back-to-back deployments in the Persian Gulf and unfortunately took his own life. And I never thought somebody I could be so close to could be another statistic with veteran suicide. And so I left the service wanting to do something um, to honor his legacy. And I wanted to to build a business that can, that could add business value to clients, but also social impact to our needy military veteran communities. Um, I've been fortunate in this journey to meet my co-founder, Bill Frazier, who was a a, a Wall Street uh, veteran, having 50 years experience in the, in the industry. And when, when Mr. Frazier was coming out uh, or starting his career, he noticed a lot of his friends that were coming back from Vietnam had a lot of difficulties transitioning and he always wanted to, to make a difference. And this has been a really interesting way for him at a later point in his life to be able to make a difference to our veteran communities. And so we teamed up to found American veterans group and we have a unique mission. Uh, we aim to serve, Business, our, our clients through business value in the capital markets, um, which I can talk more about, but we have an interesting social mission. 25% of our firm's profits are reinvested back into military communities. Um, 
And we're really excited about what we've done and where we're looking to go as we further our mission. Yeah, so can you talk a little bit about the your the group's actual business model and, and how do you generate that that return for for supporting veterans groups? Correct. So thank you. So when companies and municipalities need to access the capital markets to borrow capital, um, they, they need to find investors. And so what we do at American Veterans Group is help them, uh, help the companies and municipalities access this investor network. Um, we've been able to build a proprietary distribution system of um, smaller investors. It might not necessarily be on the biggest bank's radar uh, when it comes to uh, marketing to these kinds of clients. And, and so we've been able to, to provide a great service to them in in accessing the capital markets. Um, we, as a veteran-owned business, we, we get, um, we're, we're certified as a veteran-owned business and get classified as a diverse supplier for a lot of companies. And what, what's really a great opportunity for us is, and what we believe deeply on is that uh, business earned with a veteran-owned business should actually be helping veterans. And so uh, through our social mission, we're able to do so in a transparent uh, and sustainable way. Okay. That's really great to know. Um, thank you. And, and Jeff, could you talk a little bit about your role at Bank of America? And, you know, from B of A standpoint, you know, what's brought about the commitment to, to partner with and, and support the veterans community? Yeah, that uh, commitment, Paul, came from uh, senior leadership uh, years ago, and it's continued to sustain not only the CEO, uh, Brian Moynihan, but the whole management team, every line of business owner. And uh, I mean, it's come from the top. It's cascaded down and around. And and uh, so what I do is uh, I, I lead the military and veteran affairs team, and it's a broad team. And we try to bring a comprehensive approach to uh, to the company uh, on everything that touches military. So support of active duty servicemen and women, their families, uh, transitioning servicemen and women, because it's just uh it's more difficult uh, today, I think, to transition than maybe when uh, when Ben left the service and certainly when I left the service in 2008. But um, we, per- we pursue this talent uh, relentlessly called military service member, uh, new veteran. I just celebrated my 12th uh, year of being a veteran uh, on Wednesday. It was great. And um, and they've just got they've got the talent. They got the work ethic. They got the attitude um, that that helps Bank of America. Mm-hmm. Um, on a bottom line, uh, they are they are very talented. They're going to work hard. Um, I mean, and, and, and think about what they did. You know, in my 29 years of service, um, I saw them uh, globally on um, aircraft carriers like Ben was on. Uh, I remember being on the USS Roosevelt after 9-11 uh, for 159 straight days in the Indian Ocean. And you talk about a team of teams, and that's Stan McChrystal's book. But the air department, the cat and resting gear, uh, the, the, the services, the nuclear reactor department, the engineering department, the air department, it was just unbelievable what, uh, what we could do. And, um, and so you take that, you know, the, the work ethic as a transition into Bank of America or any other company in, 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 in America is, uh, they can't shake it. It's with them forever. Attitude is, you know, theirs to keep or, or not, but, uh, most of them, uh, keep, uh, you know, the right attitude. And then the talent part is they can, they can run big things. I mean, they took an oath to the constitution of the United States to an ideal. Um, they are highly trained. Uh, they deploy overseas. They work on very diverse teams. They work long, long hours. Uh, I can remember working eight hours after dinner, several, several nights in a row. And, um, and so that, uh, all together, they're good at decision-making and, and picking up the next, uh, task or the next problem. Uh, and, and as I said, they work on teams as, as followers, as, uh, peers, as teammates, or as leaders. So we like it. We like that talent and we pursue it. Uh, we, we pursue it assertively. Great. Well, that's, that's great to know. Yeah. You're, you've got a, a population that's talented, that's trained, that's selfless, that knows teamwork, um, that knows crisis management, which we all need help with these days. Every company does, given what we're going through in this country uh, and around the world with uh, the pandemic, uh, but need 
folks who may need some help making that transition. So that's that that's great what B of A is doing. Um, let, let's turn for a second and talk a little bit about um, veterans uh, owned businesses as, as suppliers and business partners. Um, so, you know, Ben, could you talk about when you when you approach um, companies um, and offering to provide your services to them, um, you know, how much explanation or education do you need to do about your your business model and and why they should choose to work with you? Yeah, great question, Paul. So I think to start out, number one, um, companies want to know what our business capabilities are. Uh, they want to they want to learn about our team. Is it experienced enough? They want to learn about our um, distribution, for example, in my business, uh, and they want to learn about our you know capacity to do the work, um, our ability to fill orders. Um, in my business specifically, it's you know, having the, the amount of capital to be able to uh, participate on a, on a bond offering, for example. Um, but what's really special, I think, about B of A and the trends that we're seeing is that businesses are being really thoughtful about you know, their, their diverse supplier spin. Um, they they want to see us to be able to do the work, but they also want to see how the veteran community in our instance is being positively shaped um, and being a partner in the local community. And so what we're really trying to do as well is, is to, to build the social impact at no additional cost to the company. Uh, we're able to, to be partners in, in the backyards of where our clients work and serve as well. Um, we're able to, to help team up on veteran issues that, um, that, they're, that they care about. For example, with Bank of America, uh, we were able to, to, to partner with them on advancing a, um, a charity called Four Block in Charlotte, North Carolina, and in New York City um, to help them advance their veteran uh, causes at the same time. And so it's a, it's a really interesting insight that we're seeing is we need to be able to do the work and add business value, number one, but also partnering up and being, you know, a voice in the community with them and providing transparent impact is important. Right. So that's great. So you've got to be able to do the core, the, meet their core business needs of having the right team and capabilities, but then you're also amplifying their own social impact. Uh, it's not just, you know, hiring a veteran-owned uh, business to to work with them, but it's it's the broader impact that you you provide them. So that that's that's a little maybe that's a little unique. I'm wondering, you know, if if there are other veteran-owned businesses out there that may not have exactly your business model. Do you have any advice for them as to how to get the attention of of large companies? And, and maybe they should just adopt your business model to do so. But I'm wondering if you've got advice for some of the uh, better known businesses out there. Um, Absolutely. I think, I think number one network, um, you know, with other, other veterans, uh, the, the veterans that I've gotten to know uh, over the years have just been extremely uh, helpful in sharing their insights and in being honest, which is really important. Um, I would talk to the diverse supplier teams at uh, you know, potential institutions uh, like those at you know, B of A, which is what I did. Um, and I would talk to potential customers to find out if there's a real need for your, for your service or your product, um, and then take an initiative and be curious. All the values that we learned is, is, you know, in the military community, those skills are, are so needed. And, and, and my story is just one of many uh, from the military community to show that um, you know, it's, it's needed in corporate America. And uh, we're really excited to, to be able to do it. It's really interesting. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it speaks to, I don't know if it has to do with the military training, but there's definitely an entrepreneurial sort of can-do spirit here that's animating your organization and, and many of the others who are over-indexing and in starting small businesses. Um, hey, Jeff, so, you know, B of A has a very strong track record of of lending to uh, veteran-owned businesses, and among other things, helping them become suppliers to, to companies and, and governments. So, could you talk a little bit about how your how your lending program works uh, for for uh, veterans and and how you how you measure impact in that area? 
Yeah, thanks, uh, Paul. Our CEO and, and uh, a small uh, business executive uh, on Capitol Hill a couple of years ago, along with Small Business Administration, really rolled out a, a lending program, a uh, veteran entrepreneur lending program, to uh, provide uh, you know the biggest barriers, access to capital, for the 10% of the men and women who leave the service every year out of 200,000 uh, that do, 10% of them raise their hand and say, I want to, I want to start a business. You know, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm used to taking orders and now I want to give some orders and, mm-hmm. uh, but really to take control of their own trajectory. And I admire that in them. I lots of times wish I could be two people and have started my own business like that. Maybe it's not too late, but I think, you know, that entrepreneur spirit and that can do, uh, attitude goes a long way, but, but, um, you know, that, that first step out of the gate, is the hardest one and traditional lenders uh unless you've got unless you've got a track record or you know six figure revenue generation for a few years it's just hard to cobble together anything other than friends and family and credit cards and stuff like that so this real access to capital through a network of uh, uh cdfis uh community development financial institutions all around the country about a thousand of them is um how we started uh, networking together to figure out you know, the People Fund in Austin, Texas, and then a, another one in the Carolinas, another one in California, and so forth, on, on because they know their constituency and how they live and what they want to do and so forth. And it's not, it's more than just lending. Um, it's also learning and technical, uh, mm-hmm. a technical approach to, um, to, to, to help, you know. So we're in this together. Uh, the learning part through Syracuse University and Oklahoma State University, uh, vet to CEO, and uh, that technical assistance through um, through the same uh, nonprofits and CDFI. So it's been just tremendous to see this. We we're expanding it now to about 250 CDFIs for that access to capital and track those veterans who need those loans. And most of most of that program, uh, over half of the new veterans who want to start their business were startups in the zero to two year phase um, where it's the toughest. So, mm-hmm. you know, and, and so whether they want to own their own business, Paul, or uh, be a franchisee or uh, and be a supplier to a major contractor, uh, whatever it is, you know, we, we have a good supplier diversity um, uh, program, got some good rec- uh, recognition uh, last year in the top 100 best for vets. Uh, real happy with that. You know, the military itself is about 40 percent diverse. Mm-hmm. And and so whether it be minorities or women or just, uh, you know, veterans, you get a lot when, when you get a veteran uh, on, on that uh, on that diverse front and, um, you know, taking charge of their own trajectory. So we're we're real happy to be uh, uh, in, very involved with uh, with making that transition work for that subset of the men and women who leave the service. That's great. Yeah. And you mentioned the word transition, and it seems like you've got a, a highly talented pool of potential employees who may need a little help transitioning to the private sector workforce. You've got a talented pool of potential entrepreneurs who may need a little assistance in, in stepping up and launching their own businesses or taking over a franchise or something like that. And, and you're helping in those those transitions. But, you know, Jeff, at B of A, you know, you, you all do something that goes a little bit beyond just the initial transition. You've got programs addressed not only to, to hire veterans, but also to develop and, and support them throughout their time at B of A. And maybe you could talk a little bit about the programs that you've got in place to help uh, veterans as employees that can serve as a model for others. Well, you know, just like Ben and I got in the Navy, there's three different routes to get in the service. And one's the way he did through an academy. The other mm-hmm. one's through uh, uh, Reserve Officer Training Course, ROTC, and the other one's like I got in. And so that diversity of uh, su- supply and demand uh, works well. We we bring them in. We've got some uh, rotational programs uh, with uh, Global Banking and Markets up in New York, Veteran, Assist- uh, Veteran Associate Program. We've got, a, uh, uh, we've got a rotational program. So these are not large numbers, but they're very, very focused. Uh, high touch, a uh, bit of hand holding, uh, very competitive um, junior military officers, senior non commissioned officers that we do the same thing in our tech and ops uh, line of business, the same thing in our retail line of business, consumer line of business. And so, so there's ways to bring them in there. 
Um, and then we do an immediate from day one employment. Um, you know, we're on them. And because we want to, it's sort of after the sale or after the acquisition in this case, of uh, making sure they feel welcome. And just like in the service, you know, you, uh, you get a sponsor when you go to a new unit. And so, so we're going to sponsor them and we're going to make sure that they know that they made the right decision and that we're very glad that they picked Bank America to, uh, to come work for. And, and so we get on them right away. We do uh, welcome aboard calls. We have a veteran onboard initiative, like a, like a battle buddy or a wingman um, who's going to say, Hey, Hey, uh, Sal, how you doing? How's it going? Right. And, you know, you never know. You just leave an open ended question and they'll tell you about the technology's not working or my boss doesn't know a sergeant from an admiral or why my haircut looks, looks like this, or why I'm mm-hmm. saying ma'am so often or something like that, just to get, get them over the hump. And then, and then we've got a veteran development program where we're really, as, as Ben said, you know, they, the, the veterans, when they, when they leave, I think the, the, the biggest thing that they uh, lack leaving the service is one is business acumen and two is networking. Cause then networking in the Navy is a chain of command. It's vertical. And networking uh, elsewhere outside of the service is more horizontal and, uh, and, and has different meaning. And uh, so we, we have these employee networks. Uh, we've got 40 that are uh, 43 that are military uh, focused uh, assistance groups. And so you can land in a place uh, there that's a, um, it's a loving place. It's friendly place. And they're going to talk a little bit of business and war stories. And then you're also going to join some other uh, employee networks, uh, black professional group, um, uh, the Latino group, the LGBTQ group, the disabled group. And so any other places you want to be, and it's going to give you exposure to different lines of business. Um, and then we've got a consumer academy too, Paul, that, that, that says, hey, look, if you want to go from point A to point B, um, you know, it's more than just marching in formation and putting one foot in front of the other. We're going to show you how you can get from here to there. And so people, you know, a lot of them don't want to do what they did in the military. So they got an occupational specialist that says they're 11 Bravo and they shoot rifles and, or they're Navy divers and, and, uh, and that kind of stuff. And so they want to do something else like what Ben's doing and like what I'm doing. And, um, so most of them, I mean, a lot of them want to do something else. And so that's where the work ethic and attitude comes in. And we'll get, you know, we'll get that talent part and the teaching part. And, uh, you know, some of them want to do, uh, they want to go build their own book of business. Some of them want to do credit risk, threat finance, money laundering, uh, retail, all kinds of things. So we, you know, we, we say, hey, here's the menu here. What don't you like? Okay, throw that off. And then what do you like? And uh, and then And then here we go. And then we've got. Just, you know, support network, uh, uh, like defense in depth, you know, three layers or so, and make sure that we keep them past a year. And uh, and then after that, they go, okay, I'm in a good place. If I get a better offer, you know, it's going to pay me eight times what I'm getting here to do something similar. Okay, that, that, you know, they'll, they'll go. But uh, at, at least they're not going to leave because of the culture shock or because they don't think people don't care for them. Right. No, that's really interesting. And I really, I think that point too about going from an organization where it was really hierarchical and the networking was, was done in a sort of vertical way to, to operating in an environment where it's about multiple horizontal or diagonal networks is, uh, is really interesting. Um, so, so let's talk a little bit about um, veterans as members of of communities. Um, ben, as we talked about, you, you donate 25% of your earnings to veterans nonprofits. And, you know, in this, in this era of COVID, you know, w- what are the main gaps that you see right now in serving veterans needs? And what can companies, investors, and others in the private sector step in to do to, to meet those needs? Yeah, great question, Paul. And um, I think, Where we really see a huge opportunity using American Veterans Group as a vehicle is um, we see a very fragmented space with military nonprofits. Um, There's there's just tons of them out there, all doing great work, all on the front lines, you know, helping our veterans uh, with with the various issues such such as making the transition, 
And, and you also see great institutions like B of A and, and, and Jeff's team that have made these incredible uh, hiring goals to, to, to training and onboarding these, these veterans um, as they start their private sector career. And so what we really see is an opportunity at American Veterans Group is trying to be in that interface between, you know, the, the charities and building, you know, a network of them and learning about what they're doing and how we can help them. And also, you know, connecting to, to Jeff's team and seeing how we can, you know, as a diverse supplier or in the supply chain, really help advance those, those issues together. Um, that's where we really see a great opportunity for us as a middle player in the space. Um, but specifically for us, like the, the things that I personally care about great, quite a bit are um, helping veterans build a network. You need to see success, I think, to have you know, an inner belief and greater confidence that you can do it. And I think when you, when you talk to folks like, like Jeff that have made the transition or you know, my other friends from the Naval Academy that, that successfully made the transition, that gave me confidence that I could do it myself. And um, I think that was something that, you know, my friend Keith lacked. Um, and we want to use our company as a vehicle to to really, you know, turn that into a positive. Yeah. I When you were talking, I was thinking of it. It seems to tie back to, to your friend. Um, you go from being in an environment where you're, you know, the rules where you're successful at it. And then all of a sudden you find yourself in a situation where you just don't know if you can if you can make it. Even though you've got the talent, you may just not have the confidence to do it. And so there's a, a real need to help fill that um, and, uh, and and give people the, the confidence that they need to to succeed. Um, and networking can help that. So that's 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 really a really interesting event. Um, so, Jeff, if, if you're you know, not at lucky enough to work at B of A, let's say you, you, you're one of those people who goes off and gets paid eight times somewhat uh, more somewhere else, but at this other company that pays eight times as much as, as B of A, you know, if they're interested in doing more for veterans, whether, um, you know, as employees, as customers, as business partners, as suppliers, you know, where do they start? How, how does a, how should a company um, that's interested in serving veterans begin to do so? I think, uh, uh, Paul, depending on the size of the company and the resources and so forth, you know, uh, 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 a mandate from the top or an edict or, you know, a, certainly a strong message from the executive director, or the CEO would, would be key. And, and, and to get that out there um, so that it becomes cascaded throughout the uh, throughout the company and uh, whether it's a regional or a national or global company or anything like that, but really. You know, a lot of companies, uh, including down here where I live near MacDill Air Force Base and uh, in Tampa, um, you know, a lot of people, and I would say more so 10 years ago than now, uh, said, hey, I want to hire a vet. And and uh, it's easy enough to hire a vet, and, but there's still a big divide because, as I said, you know, they're so well trained and they're off and their, their operational tempo is pretty high. And the skill sets in America that have been, you know, have undergone tremendous transition over the last 10 years in the digital and technology technological environment it's just i mean so the skills mismatch in this country is what they're jumping into and and the culture and how do these teams work and what are your core values and all this kind of stuff and you know i'm thinking of ben's friend you know and 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 so so it's it's not so easy to shed the uniform for the last time and your identity and and everything else in the in the culture but you have to do that as a military member you have to do that because the mission is yours put it in your lap own it and and charge forward on the other side these nonprofits and these other companies can really start there's enough information out there there's enough research out there through like our partners at the Institute of Veterans mm -hmm. and Military Families in Syracuse and the Bush Institute uh, uh, president uh, 43 out in uh, Dallas, Texas. And so we know, and there's, uh, there's, there's enough information out there, almost too much information for a lot of veterans and some of these nonprofits, um, they, they're all good. There's a dollar, there's a lot of them in the military space. There's 45,000 or so of them. And, um, so it's, it's just a tough, and then you got to sign up with a VA 
And, uh, you know, and then if, if you got some medical ongoing concerns, um, then you've got to take care of that. And, uh, and then if the emotional well-being, the mental part of it, and the post-traumatic stress and all that enter, enters the equation, that is, uh, man, you need to get some help just to kind of lift a couple of balls. And, uh, so it can be, it can be daunting. So any, any of the nonprofits out there, any of the companies that can just say yes, and we're going to facilitate and ease the transition, uh, they've got our attention, uh, day and night. Because it's, uh, you know, and you think about it, you have to put about 150 people in a room for one of them to be in uniform. That's how many are serving today. And so people support the troops, but they don't really know them. And uh, it's just the size of the force and, and the deployment and everything else. So um, so to really know them, uh, what they do and their families and so forth, it's not easy for the civilians to understand that because you look around and, and uh you know, most of them, 70, 80 percent of them live off the installation, uh, you know, and you run by and maybe once a year you'll see somebody mowing a yard. And then a lot of times they're just deployed. So so it's a it's a it's an outreach on both sides. But for companies, those employee networks, employee resource uh, resource groups, uh, make a mix of it. Don't just uh, isolate it into HR or uh, diversity inclusion. But uh, like in our company, we've got a whole broad team that that, uh, you know, touches these men and women and their families and their families, military spouses, uh, very vastly underemployed and unemployed. And um, so it's a it's a look, it's a great way to support the troops, so to speak. And then also, you know, do the righteous mission of bringing them back and integrating them properly because they are the fabric of the country, a big part of it. And they're community contributors. Yeah, I think that's great pieces of advice for, for folks who are looking to help out in this space. Um, you need the commitment from the top. You need to actually learn the needs of the veterans um, that you're hoping to serve, uh, just to make assumptions, and that you want to offer them the opportunity, frankly, to be part of multiple networks. Um, and so they're not sort of siloed in some way. And that, you know, that increases their own resilience and their own um, chances of success. So look, um, Jeff and Ben, th thank you very much for, for what you're doing, um, for sharing your thoughts today on ESG News and Views. Uh, and I want to thank everyone for listening to this conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'd encourage you to visit our website, conference-board.org, where we'll post this podcast. And we've got a number of other resources relating to corporate citizenship. Uh, including a, uh, a recent webcast featuring the Elizabeth Dole Foundation. So thank you again, uh, Jeff and Ben, and everyone uh, stay safe and be well. This has been ESG News and Views from the Conference Board.